Greetings folks. In this video, I want to talk to you about my 10 favorite Nikon lenses of all time. It's been a big two years for Nikon building out the Z range of lenses and a lot of the ones on my list are Zs, but I'm also including some F mounts. Also, I'm adding to the list one additional third party lens and one that's on the way that I think is going to make the list for a lot of you guys. I would love to hear what are your top 10 lenses for the system that you're shooting or top five, whatever it is that you've used and really love. And if you're watching this at the end of 2022, make sure you check out a couple of things I have going on. We've got the brand new Educating Steph course that has just... Now, let's jump into the list of the 10 lenses. This is in no particular order, but of course, being that I love these lenses, I do own a lot of them. First up, let's talk about this guy. This is a 500 mil prime that gives you fantastic optical image quality and via the FTC adapter, it adapts beautifully and performs flawlessly with the new Z cameras. It's the 500 PF lens and it's just so small and light. It's really not much bigger than a 70 to 200. Completely hand holdable, gives you great reach. The only downside is that it's an F5.6 which honestly for background blur isn't a big issue, but if you're shooting in low light, you know, having a slower aperture means that you're often going to be at a higher ISO than you might wanna be, but it's just a spectacular lens. And if you're doing long lens stuff and 500 mil works for you, it's a great option. I would personally choose this over something like the 500 F4 that they had. Next up, I don't have it in my hands because I'm not shooting F mount anymore, but it's the 85mm f1.8. Now the 1.4 is optically better, no doubt about that, but the 1.8 gave, I think, such great value for money. If you're comparing the 1.4 and the 1.8, it's really hard to justify the 1.4 considering the price difference and the image quality is only that slight bit cheaper, sorry, that slight bit better. So you can check that one out. I'll have links to all of these lenses as well as the videos that I've shot with them over time below. Next up is a real oldie. And this is one that I've actually never owned, but I've shot with it a lot. I've thought about it a lot. It's the 58mm Noct lens. Now this is a legendary lens. The only thing is it sells for like 10 times more than the 51.2 or even the 55 1.2. And I don't think it's that much more special, but it is a spectacular lens. If you're shooting mirrorless, the ability to use your live view to get perfect focus really opens up those kind of manual lenses. And if you're into that kind of vintage, not clinically sharp kind of look, it has a really special character that few in the Nikon range can really match. Next up, another oldie is the 135 DC. Now I owned the 105, shot a lot with the 135, but I've included the 135 in this one because it was even more unique and I have another 105 on the list. For those of you who don't know, DC means defocus control. And it's a really cool technology where let's say you're focusing, I'm making these numbers up, eight foot away and with your aperture setting, it's yielding, let's say a one inch depth of field. The DC lets you move how much of that foreground and background blur is in front or behind that point by slightly shifting the focus, but still keeping your focus point in sharp focus. It's a really cool idea. Not too many of them are on the market. They're built like absolute tanks and they just have a really nice image quality to them. Next up is this guy, the 70 to 200 Z mount S lens. Now this is an F 2.8. I've shot with pretty much all of the 70 to 200s for F mount of the past 20 years. This is more expensive, it's lighter, and optically it's just a next level ahead. It's really spectacular. If you're looking at a 70 to 200 and you're in the Z system, I wouldn't hesitate to say go for this one, although the previous two generations in F mount, the 2.8 and the 2.8e were both great and they do adapt really well using the FTC adapter. I'll also have a link below to show you videos where I've looked at adapted lenses on the Nikon Z9. But the new one is just that much better. The clarity and the image, co the, the colors coming out of it, I think are 
a level above all of the previous ones. I should say if you're in the Nikon Z system as well, I hope you have seen, I have a complete setup guide that takes you through the Z9 in huge amount of detail, but it also covers every camera in the system. So if you're looking at a second camera or you're not a Z9 owner, it goes through and shows you the physical layout and what all of the buttons do on every single Z camera, it takes you through the menu system to explain what all the options are and how to set up and customize your camera so that over time, you've got it in the right kind of settings to get the exact results that you want. Link for that one's below. Next up is this guy the 51.2 one2 S lens. Now I have to say the previous flagship for F mount, the 1.4G, I just didn't think was a very good lens, to be honest. Again, I would go with the 1.8 for 95% of people. The 1.2 is spectacular. I won't wax lyrical on it. It's great in every single regard, except it's so big. Here is Sony's 50 mil 1.2. And you can see there's just a ridiculous size difference between the two and weight, which does make, you know, balancing it on a lot of systems like a Z7 II, for example, a little bit of a chore. So spectacular, but you have to be willing to put up with that size and heft. Next up would be the lens that I'm filming myself on right now. The lens that I use more than anything and have for about 10 years would be a 24 to 70 f2.8. We also have the F4 version for Z mount, and we use that for video, and it's just fine. It's a great value option, but the 2.8 is really spectacular. The color you get off it, the sharpness, the quality of the blur, the speed and silence of operation, I just can't compare it. I have been a huge uh, 24 to 72 8 Nikon lover for 10 or 15 years, Except for the last one they brought out for F-mount, the VR. I personally didn't really like that one as much as the generation previous. But this is just, I would say, even more than the 70 to 200. It's a huge leap forward over anything that they have offered previously. Next up, this guy, another F-mount. This is the 105 F1.4 E. Whilst I do hope they'll bring out a 105.14 for Z mount, this is so good optically. I just love the rendition that you get from this. The 1.4, even at you know 1.4, is quite sharp, but by a 1.8 or f2, it's really performing great. And again, despite being so big and so heavy, it really does great on the FTC adapter. So this has to be on my list. Next up, I don't have it here, but we've just done a couple of videos on it, is the 400mm f2.8 TC lens for Z mount. Wow, it's such a great lens. It's so light compared to its size and to previous generations. The built-in TC really degrades the image quality minimally, which is saying a lot because TCs just do degrade your image quality. And it's super fast, it's silent. The kind of quality you're getting off it is unbelievable. It is 14,000 US dollars, but if 400 mil and then with the TC 560 is kind of your working range and is going to be useful for you for portraits, for sports, for wildlife. It's a spectacular lens and I'm personally hugely tempted by it. Coming up to number 10 and I'm sure anyone who's been watching the channel for a while has a really clear idea of what we're going to see next. This guy. This is the 200mm f2. Again, if they were to make this again for Z mount, there's only one thing that I think they could really improve on, and that's the weight. This lens weighs pretty much the same as the 400mm f2.8, despite being half the size. You can just tell from the build quality, it's full of metal. <laughs> this is metal and glass, other than the rubber rings. I don't know if there's any plastic on this, maybe other than the buttons. And I don't know what secret source they put onto this lens, but when I compared it against lenses of the same era, it blows them away. When I compare it against lenses of the modern era, like the 70 to 200 current generation, which is a decade of technical improvements over it, much lighter, all of that stuff, this still 
is just the next level up. The, the focus on this is exceptional on the FTC adapter. It actually focuses faster on the Z9 than it does using the no adapter on the D6, their previous flagship. And really there's nothing that I would change about this except if it went on a diet to lose a few pounds, which would be you know, basically what I would be hoping for if they were to bring out a Z mount native option of this. They're certainly building out their long lens. I haven't heard any rumors or gossip that there's this on the roadmap. So fingers crossed at some point they do, but for now I'm super happy with this. I really can't see myself ever parting with this one. They would have to do something extremely special to make me consider upgrading from this to a Z mount. Now, there's two other lenses that I wanted to mention. One is a third party lens and one is a rumored lens. Now, you'll note on my list I only had 185 mil. That was the 1.8 F lens. And I put that on because at the time I was shooting with those F mount cameras, I was using 85 mil a lot. And that's probably something to keep in mind for this whole video. Your, your preferences change over time with the kind of things that you're shooting. So the big rumor is, and it seems pretty much certain, that Nikon's gonna be bringing out an 85 1.2 S lens for Z mount really soon. My guess is it's going to be even bigger than this, which is saying something. Um, a lot of people have been, not a lot, but there's been a few incidences of people buying new Nikon lenses and getting the wrong warranty card, and it says 85 1.2. It's not officially confirmed by Nikon that the lens is going to be a 1.2, but there is an 85S lens on the roadmap. I know there's a lot of people waiting on that one. I'll certainly do my best to test it out, but how I'm shooting these days, 50, 24 to 70, and 70 to 200 are really covering it for me again. I have the 85 1.8, but it's just not getting a whole lot of use. It is our B cam angle though today. And for third party lenses, I went back and forward about what one I wanted to include. And I think I have to go with the Tamron 35 to 150 F mount lens. Now, yes, they've brought out mirrorless versions that are even a stop faster, but for me that kind of lost what the value of that was. It was such a great balance on a DSLR camera. It had the zoom range 35 to 150 covers so much of your shooting uh, opportunities if you're doing day-to-day -day stuff or you're going on a holiday. The aperture range of f2.8 to f4 was plenty fast and it was just a great balance. Price, weight, image quality and versatility. I think the new one being an f2 to 2.8, it's great marketing, I'm sure it has sold great. But for me, it got so big, so heavy, and so off balance because the cameras have gotten smaller and lighter, it kind of lost the appeal of being an all-in-one. Well, maybe it went from being an all-in-one for travel and personal work to being an all-in-one for a day of production where you want the extra image quality and the extra stop of aperture at both ends of the spectrum. So that, roughly speaking, is my top 10 Nikon lenses plus a third party plus the rumored lens. Let me know what are your top lenses, whether you're in the Nikon system, Sony, Canon, Pentax, whatever it may be, uh, as a comment below. If you're watching this at the end of 2022, Happy New Year, thank you for all of your support this year. Check out the deals we've got going on at the moment, the Nikon Z Guide and the new courses, Educating Steph and Art Nude in public. Leave me any questions or comments and I'll see you in 2023. Cheers guys.